I'm Daniel, by the way. Hi, nice to meet you. Everyone. Thanks for. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. 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 Nice to see you. Thank you. Hi. Eugene. Eugene. Nice, nice to meet you. Hey, Phil. Hey, Eugene. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm independent. Okay. I have a card here. Okay, well I'll just read the statement quickly. I have a copy you can take, um, and I also have some uh, bill text for you to look at. The bill itself is about 1,885 pages long. I'm assuming you don't want the entire bill, so we can talk about that after, but let me just read the statement first. Thank you for visiting my office today and bringing your concerns to my attention. I am currently working in Washington, D.C., and therefore cannot speak to you personally. The National Defense Authorization Act passed both chambers under the regular legislative process. Included in this bill were provisions dealing with military custody of terrorist suspects. These provisions are not in any way intended to restrict the habeas rights of American citizens or limit the ability of Americans to exercise their constitutional rights. In fact, this bill explicitly exempts U.S. citizens from any changes to current law. Section 1022 states that, quote, the requirement to detain a person in military custody under this section does not extend to citizens of the United States. I share your concerns and would not have voted for this bill if I felt the basic rights and freedom of Americans, freedoms of Americans, were being limited or removed. I supported the defense bill because of the positive impact it will have on our national defense, our local economy, and on our men and women in uniform. I appreciate you being here today and making your voices heard. My staff has related your concerns to me and I will continue to keep them in mind in my work in Washington. Um, would, would we be able to get uh, some assurance from the Congresswoman that um, this bill in no way intends to uh, uh, incarcerate folks from the occupations around the country? Sure. Well, well I mean, the, the language speaks for itself, and I can show you. So this is Section 1022 referenced in there, um, which is referencing Section 1021, which said certain people, excluding U.S. citizens, are uh, have to go through a military chain before they can go to the justice, through the Department of Justice. Um, what this says explicitly is the requirement to detain a person in military custody under this section does not extend to citizens of the United States. Now, if this were the battlefield in Afghanistan or something to that effect, it would obviously go case by case, but American citizens have habeas rights, um, actually non-American citizens in some cases have habeas rights. So. I think the law is on the side of, of the movement, and um, and certainly this legislation, which is actually pretty narrow in scope, um, would, would also be on the side. Did that change from before? Because I thought before it was section 1031 and 1032. Um, I don't know which, which sections you're looking under, if it was the different versions of the Senate bill. Uh, that come through before him. This was the result of the conference. You know, you have the House version of the NDAA, you have the Senate version of the NDAA, and then you have the conference committee, which comes together, you know, works out the differences, and then produces a conference report. And this okay. was the language that was in the conference report, okay. which I, I was at the office. I don't think the president's actually signed, but this is the version that would become law if, if the president. It's on if and the, the president. And the president has not signed it yet, right? Uh, is that I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. Is that available online? Is what available online? That the conference version? Yep. And where can we find it online? Uh, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, it would be thomas.loc.gov. Can you pull up? It's the National Defense Authorization Act in the House. It's H.R. 1540. And that's actually the vehicle that was used for the conference report. So if you pull up H.R. 1540, make sure you're looking at the right version of H.R. 1540. Well, that's the thing, because I saw one from the 15th, which is old. Well, you'll see you'll see the one that's engrossed and signed into law, and that will be the version that, I mean, assuming the president signs it, that right. will be the final version. Right. I, didn't, I didn't see signed. that as of five minutes ago. So is there some, Okay. Is there well, you can also go to house.gov slash HASC, okay. which is the House Armed Services Committee website, and that okay. will also have... Uh, and also, uh, Congressman Adam Smith on his website has a summary of the bill as well, if you go to his He's site. He's the ranking member on the committee. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much.